Okay, in this presentation, we're going to use a packet of cards to solve a very interesting problem in number theory, okay? So as you can see, I have a good selection of cards, uh, just eight of them of different values and suits and colors. And what we're going to do together is we're going to randomize the packet. And through that randomization, we're going to solve a very famous number theory problem, okay? So, um, so with this packet here, there's many, many random shuffles I could have you do. So maybe uh, I'll just kind of randomly choose some. There's actually dozens of them, in fact. Um, and I'll give you all of the uh, choices as to how we stack things or where things go. That kind of choice will be uh, yours to make, of course. Um, so why don't we do, maybe we'll do a left-right shuffle. Uh, that's just a nice, simple one. How would you like these stacked? Left on right? Okay, very good. If I can pick up the cards. Okay. Um, now from here, why don't we do a down under? Have you seen that before? The Australian down under, down under, down under, down under, down under, down under, down. That last one goes on top. Very fun shuffle to actually perform. From there, we can do a mange over under or under over. Which one would you like? You want to over under okay so what you do is you go over under over under over under over okay very good now from here we could deal out into four piles if you're interested yes okay so one two three four one two three four now we can stack these from left to right or right to left or we can do a leap frog stacking if you've seen that before on my channel you want left to right leap frog Okay, so how this works is this far left pile leaps over its neighbor, lands there. This one leaps over its neighbor, lands there. How would you like these stacked? Right on left? Okay, very good. Uh, we can also do an even or odd up jog. So this is where you jog forward. Let's say the even position cards, those in positions two, four, six, eight. How would you like these stacked? Left on right or right on left? Okay, very good. We can do a Klondike shuffle. That's a famous shuffle. This is where you take the top and bottom off as one. Now, one thing I want to point out to you is, even though I'm doing many of these shuffles just once, we could do any of them any number of times that you would like. And that is not an exaggeration. We truly could. We could roll a die or dice, we could use a random number generator, whatever <laughs> means you would like, but we can perform any of these shuffles in any order and in any quantity with you sounding in on how things are done in terms of stacking and so forth. We truly, truly can. Don't know if you've heard of a Bessie one one, but it's kind of a fun one. This is where you take the top card, just one, and then the bottom, top, Bottom, top, bottom, top, bottom. Last one goes on. The last card on the bottom goes on top. <laughs> we can also do a pharaoh shuffle. Have you seen this before? So this is where you break the packet exactly in half, and then we perfectly interlace them. And there's two ways to interlace, and either one can be done. It won't hurt anything. We can do something called push off pairs. This is where you just push off pairs of cards to the table. How would you like these stacked? Right to left? Okay, just normal right to left. That's just fine. Very good. Okay. And why don't we do just one more? It's called an alternate Klondike. This is where you Klondike pairs the cards to the table, left, right, left, right, with random stacking decided by you, right on left. Okay, very good. Would you like to do any more of those? Or if you're aware of other Bessie shuffles, would you like to perform any other Bessie shuffles? Because I'm happy to do that. You want to do a Bessie 2-2? Okay, well, that's a good one. So this is where you take the cards in middle grip, as I have here. Now you take the top two one at a time. You go one, two from the top, one, two from the bottom, one, two from the top, one, two from the bottom. Okay, so that's a great way to mix the cards as well. Now, if you imagine tracking the cards, so for example, if you had noted the identity of one of the cards at the beginning, how easy would it have been for you 
to track where that single card is right now. Now imagine doing that for all eight cards simultaneously, okay? There's no way on this green earth anyone's going to be able to do that, okay? <laughs> There's just no way. Okay, so to finish here, now we, we talked about a packet of cards solving an interesting problem in number theory. Well, let's finish and show you that that's the case, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to deal out the cards into kind of a triangle pattern, which is kind of fun. A triangle pattern like this. And then we'll just stack in opposite order, okay? And now from here, whoop, pick up the other card. <laughs> from here, I'm going to deal out four cards into one pile. The remaining cards can be a second pile. Okay, so what is the prediction? I have a written prediction over here, if you can see. So uh, let's go ahead and take a look at that and see what number theory problem we were able to solve here. Okay, well, first off, it says the final two sets of cards will consist of one of each suit. Okay, is that true? Is there one of each suit here? Well, there's a, a club, art, spade, diamond. Okay, that's true there. What about over here? Uh, let's see, club, art, spade, diamond. So that is true. Oh, yeah, we have a second part <laughs> to the prediction. The two sets will have equal sums of card values. Now, I want you to think about how likely that is to have happened by chance alone, that the particular card values on the left, when added, will equal the sum of the card values on the right. Just think about what it would take for that to be the case. Well, let's check to see if it's even true, right? Seems like a pretty grandiose claim there. Uh, okay, so we get one plus four, uh, plus six is 11, plus seven is 18. Uh, eight plus five, 13, plus three is 16, plus two is 18. These indeed add up to 18. Okay, I'm gonna be LCD and just <laughs> put those in the same way. Okay, so the second part of our prediction is correct. Uh, what about the third part? The two sets will have equal sums of squares. Okay, so I'm not sure if you know what that means, but for a number theorist, they would know exactly what that means. Okay, so let me explain what that means. So what that means then is we've shown right now that these add up to the same number. They both add up to 18. This crazy claim here is saying that if you square each of these numbers, add them, you'll get the same answer as squaring each of these numbers and adding them, okay? Now we've left the realm of any plausibility of that happening by chance alone, okay? <laughs> well, let's check to see if it's even true. Is that true? So let me grab a pen here. Okay, so is it true? I'll move it up here so we can kind of work for a second. So seven, so seven squared. What's seven squared? It's 49 plus six uh, squared plus four squared plus, now ace will count as a one. And I'll put a big fat question mark here. Question, is that equal to eight squared plus five squared plus three squared plus two squared? Now, as I mentioned, this is a famous problem in number theory, and we're going to actually go beyond this in just a minute. I'll explain some things that generalize using packets of cards, actually. Okay, so this is 49 plus 36 plus 16 plus 1. Over here, we get 64 plus 25 plus 9 plus 4. Now, initially looking at these, there's really no reason to think that those four sets of numbers will add up to the same thing, right? Just kind of looking at them quickly, you think, are those really going to add up to the same thing? Well, as you can check, they do indeed. Each of these sets of four cards add up to the same thing over here. It adds up to 102. 
okay? So these do indeed add up to the same sum. So the sums of the squares are the same. It's 102. Okay, well, believe it or not, there's another part to the uh, prediction. One set of values will consist of only Fibonacci card values. Hmm, is that true? Is it true that the card values in one of these two sets are purely Fibonacci numbers, where, whereas the others may or may not be? Well, two, three, five, eight are indeed Fibonacci numbers. Now it is true over here, one is a Fibonacci number. It's not necessarily the most interesting one, but that's kind of where the sequence begins with a one, one, or technically a zero, one, one. Uh, but four and six and seven are not Fibonacci numbers, whereas all four of these are. So this last claim right here is absolutely true. Okay, well, let's take a look at uh, kind of how this works. It uses something called Bessie sequences of order eight. In fact, we're just using a single Bessie sequence. And then I want to generalize what we just did because what we did here is we found two sets of numbers, in fact, four numbers in each set. When added, they give you the same sum within those two sets, right? We also found that those same values when squared and added gave you the same answer also, okay? Well, depending on how many cards you're willing to work with, we can find two sets of values where they have equal sums of cubes or even powers of four or five or six, okay? So that's kind of, we'll finish on that note here when we go to generalize this. Uh, but let's go ahead and just show you how to do this quickly here um, so that you can do this right away, okay? So so here's the setup. Um, you, can, you can see what packet I had. I mean, you just rewind the video and you can see, okay, I started with the Ace of Clubs and so forth. Now I used a Bessie sequence of order eight to organize these cards, okay? So what that means then is that the cards in positions marked by ones, now this, this is just a dividing bar to kind of show us the center. So it's one, zero, zero, one, zero, one, one, zero, okay? Now the ones correspond to the ace, a four, a seven, and a six. And those were the very values we saw here, right? One, four, six, seven, right? Uh, the zeros correspond to three, eight, five, two, or put in order two, three, five, eight. And those were Fibonacci numbers, right? So this is called a Bessie sequence structure of order eight. I'm going to include links in the description below that will explain, okay, what is a Bessie sequence? Why is it of importance? Why does it have so many amazing properties when it comes to shuffling? Because really what is the case is you can put a Bessie sequence through tremendous, quote, randomization, and it will not harm the organization of that sequence. It really is most remarkable, okay? And so this sequence actually gives rise to this answer in number theory that we've just demonstrated here, as well as harder ones that we'll show you in just a moment, or at least I'll mention them in just a moment. Okay, so this organization of the packet can be put through a lot of shuffles. Okay, so go to my channel and I have a list of dozens and dozens of shuffles you can perform with random stacking and flipping and a lot of free choices being given to the spectator. Okay, now in the end, after we mix this thoroughly, which we did, we're going to separate the zeros and the ones from each other. And that's what I did with this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The dealing out into a triangle and then stacking in reverse order. That puts all of the either ones at the top, top four, and the zeros at the bottom, or vice versa. Okay, so it kind of separates them into blocks. And from there, I just dealt out the top four, if you remember, and set the rest down. And that's how we got our two packets, right? So that's how we got our one, four, six, seven, in two, three, five, eight, okay? So anyway, that's kind of a bird's eye view of the whole routine there. Now the card values are down here, two, three, five, eight, one, four, six, seven, okay? Now those two sets of numbers, as I mentioned, end up being very special ones in number theory. This is a very unusual property. 
okay? And so let me just mention the generalization. So if you're wanting two sets of numbers that have equal sums, which we had, equal sums of squares, which is what we had, but then you want equal sums of cubes, you can use a quasi Bessy sequence of order 16. And those are talked about on my channel. And I'll include a link to the playlist that talks about Bessy sequences and quasi Bessy sequences. Okay, so this is having the original numbers added to the same thing, the, the squares and the cubes. Well, if you're wanting two sets of numbers that not only do what this previous pair of sets does, then all you need to do is use a Bessie sequence of order 32. And so you'll get equal sums, equal sums of squares, equal sums of cubes, equal sums of fourth powers, okay? So that is just becoming more and more difficult to find out there in terms of how sparse or how rare these sequences are that behave this way. This, these are very special sequences, okay? And they end up being related to Bessie sequences of order 2 to the n, where n is an odd whole number, or quasi Bessy sequences of order 2 to the n, where n is an even number. So these Bessy sequences that, that I've been talking about quite a bit on my channel actually have expressions and give rise to arithmetic solutions in number theory that have fascinated mathematicians for centuries. So anyway, I just wanted to point you to that. If you want to look up videos on quasi Bessie sequences of order 16, I have several. And there's a lot of really amazing card effects you can do with this. There's equally amazing card effects you can do with a Bessie sequence of order 32. And then if you look further, I also have videos on what are called n-tuple Bessie sequences of various orders. Okay, so this is using these original structures here, and then we're repeating values in such a way that it breaks off into many problems, all of which have these amazing properties. These sequences that kind of break off from the larger one have the, a degree of symmetry that is just mind-blowing with which you can accomplish amazing mathematical card magic. So anyway, um, so I thought I'd share this with you. Um, it's a fun result in number theory, and I encourage you to take a look at other videos on the Absolute Math Magic channel.